you know, so a lot of us, you know, a lot of folks nowadays, you know, will be talking about, you know, being spiritual. A lot of us talk about spirituality, like, you know, ones will say, yeah, I'm not into no religion. I'm not into religion. I'm into spirituality, you know, and that and that sounds that sounds that sounds good. That sounds well, let me say it my way. That sounds nice. That sounds real nice. You know, I'm not into organized <laughs> and get what they say. They say, I'm not into organized religion. Mm. That's interesting when you have folks that would say, well, I'm not into organized religion, but I'm into spirituality. So there's a big movement, so to speak. It's somewhat of a, it's not really organized since most of the folks not into organization, right? Or organized religion, right? Whatever that means. They say, well, I'm into, I'm spiritual. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 into spirituality. I'm not into religion. I'm into spirituality. So so what does that mean, Chabarim? What does that mean when one say that I'm not religious? I'm not into religion. I'm into spirituality. And that sounds nice. It sounds nice, right there. But well, what do they mean? I mean, what's really being referred to when one say spiritual or spirituality? And and this is the thing. You know, in the beginning, you know, in that so-called, quote, I say so-called religious, really, it's, it, there's principles, there's precepts, if you can <laughs> spiritually receive it. You know, in books like the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, right? You know, there's certain precepts and, and, and principles that can be applied. But it says in the beginning was the word, right? In the beginning was the word. So when we're speaking about spirituality, when y'all are speaking or when they are speaking, whoever says, well... I'm not into religion. I'm spiritual. Okay, so the person is spiritual as though like the rest of us are just carnal. We're carnal and they're spiritual. But then they're, they're spiritual, but then they still have a body that's carnal. But they're spiritual. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. Right? And then they'll talk about they're not into organized religion. <laughs> Makes you think. Babylon, right? Yeah. They're not into organized religion, but they, they're into spirituality. So spirituality is their thing. And it's almost as though to say, well, like, well, when you're into spirituality, you're into good things. That's the good. When you're into religion, you're into the bad, the bad things, especially if it's organized religion. So let's go to the beginning, right? And the beginning is the word, right? What, what does spirituality even mean? Now, I know the first thing that ones ones do. This is what a lot of us do, especially nowadays. It's the easy way. You can just Google it. You know, just, just Google it. And if Google, if the, if the Google God, the God, it's like Google become like God almost in a sense. You know what I mean? Like just, just ask God. Just ask the Lord. Ask, ask Google. Just ask Google and Google will, um, well, what will Google do, right? Well, Google will do something like this right here. Let's see. I think we already have Google, right? Google on standby. Bang. Right? So here we go right here, here, here. This might just take a little minute right here. But let's go over this because there's some basics I had my brother cracking up when we was reasoning. I kind of went into it and I said, you know what? I haven't done a, a vlog or a video on this to share with the Chabarim and the brothers and sisters for them to get it. And then others, once you get the point, hopefully ones will go forward, you know, and, and articulate it, you know, in their own way. Because some principles here, when you get the principle, you can see the application in many different ways. You know, some ways that I and I see but may not be able to fully express here. And even some very unique ways you'll be able to see those principles. You know, the principle over personality. These principles over personality. This can apply to me too. I could be talking about, oh, oh, I'm not into religion. I'm spiritual. I'm, spirit, I'm into spiritual. But well, they say, here's what the definition on Google. This is the top definition right now. Right? This is the top definition. Well, I say the top definition right now because if you... Maybe when you go and search spirituality, here, here's what we got right here. Spirituality. You can see the search right there. It's just spirituality. We just put spirituality. We say, let's see what comes up. And here they say, um, spirituality, dictionary definition. <laughs> dictionary definition. Don't tell us which dictionary definition, you know what I mean? But the definition, the dictionary definition. Isn't it interesting that the dictionary is called dictionary you would think that it should be called definitionary. You know, I know some of you have heard that before, but it's still a good point. You know, instead of calling a dictionary, it should be called like a definitionary, right? Because when you, when you look up some, a word in a dictionary, you're not looking up the word in a dictionary to, to get the diction, are you? <laughs> I mean, and what kind of diction, you know? 
different people speak same or similar languages differently, right? But anyway, here's the dictionary definition. According to Google, and according to Google, roughly around, what's this? This is April 3rd, 2022. So when you see this video or, well, yeah, especially when you see the video, you know, um, you check out the video, somebody tells you about the video, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> ask for the date, right? Let them know because what's going to happen is that they're going to have a different, you know, because here it says overview, types, purpose, podcast, series. So this there's all this stuff out there. Spirituality, you know, spirituality seems to be, at least what it's called, it's just another product. Kind of remind me of some stuff that is, you know, in some of the early Christian Gnostics and the Gnostic writings, you know what I mean? You know, we talk about how, you know, spirituality, you know, almost become like a product. You know, it becomes a product. You know, they have different products you can get. You can get a product for spirituality, right? You know, in a sense, I'm just burying the lead a little bit right here, you know what I mean? Because I just want to put this into perspective, right? When we, or when ones, or when you, or me, talk about spirituality ask them what is spirituality first question what is spirituality just a definition well i'm a spiritual person well you're using the same word to define the word i'm asking you about and i'm actually with spirituality and you say you're a spiritual person you ever that ever happened to you you know i'm into spirituality you know i'm not into religion okay what what does spirituality mean what's spirituality oh well you know spiritual it's spiritual. I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual. Okay. Now you got to ask them another question. You know when you got to follow up another question. Okay. So what's spiritual? I ask them, what's spiritual? <laughs> and they say, well, well, I'm spiritual. You know, you know, I'm spiritual. You know, you know, everybody's spiritual. We're really spiritual. Then they'll go to like the we level. You know, like everybody is a spirit. But I'm asking you, you, you say you, you found something. You found that. It's not about religion, but it's about spirituality, right? Because religion is religio, and religio is holding you back, and you show me this Latin word, right? That's what they do, right? They show you the Latin word for religion. I'm sure that in, 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 in Hebrew, there's some word for that would be more or less what, quote, religion. Is. What is religion? You know, religio. So you take me to the Greek, right? So it says holding back. So now you found spirituality, so you're into spirituality. But here's the point. Just because you're into spirituality, there are good spirits and there's bad spirits. Let's speak in just plain terms. Right? There are helpful spirits and there are harmful spirits. Right? According to some ancient teaching, right? Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, or one who would be interpreted in English as God. God, right? You know, the God of the Bible is a spirit, right? He's a spirit, right? <laughs> He's a spirit, right? But the devil, right? And evil, there's evil spirits too. You see what I'm saying? It says in the beginning, right? Talking about the beginning, right? The spirit of God, right? Was upon the face, hovered upon the face of the water. Spirit. to my spirit, right? But then also the devil and, and the evil spirits. There are evil spirits. So we got to, you know what we got to define? We got to define right now spirit. And see, it's because most ones who claim, say, they're not about religion. Religion is organized, it's man-made, and so forth and so on. I mean, um, did the word spirituality drop out of the sky? Isn't the word spirit, isn't, isn't language to a certain degree? <laughs> Don't you think? Isn't language to a certain degree man-made? I mean, I mean, where does language come from? Because they'll talk about, oh, religion, I don't deal with religion. Religion is man-made. But then look at them. They're, they're wearing clothing. They're wearing clothing that's man-made. They're eating food. <laughs> Need we go there? They're eating food that more or less is, is man-made too. You see, I'm saying this because come out of her, my people. You know, come out of her. <laughs> We're going to define who her is, right? Because not, not all he's. Not all he's are bad. And not all she's are good. Not all she's right are bad and not all he's are good mm -hmm. see discernment is important discernment is important you see because the point is folks talk about spirituality all day and when you get to the rock bottom the root of it spirit is breath 
but they never in all of these so-called spiritualities or really do they really focus on breathing especially when we look at the first i want to start out first of all with the so-called abrahamic face you know like like what we, what we would call today maybe judaism right or those who say they are jews and judaism and and like christianity right and even to a little less extent for these purposes here islam right or you know judaism christianity and mohammedanism or islam but like we said we're going to focus on the so-called judeo-christian because most folks in the west because we look at the west see folks in the east they have a little better understanding of this because when you are speaking a language that you understand <laughs> speaking a language because we speak in english like I said, I use that little example there when some folks say, well, I'm not dealing, I don't deal with religion, I'm spiritual, I'm dealing with spirituality, right? <laughs> and then you ask them the question, right? Okay, um, what's spirituality? You know, because you're telling me you're trying to sell me some product, right? And I'm saying, okay, I'm interested. You got me, you know, you got me interested. You know what I mean? You, you made me look, right? You made me listen. So, so I'm listening. All right, so what's spirituality? And then it's like, well, you know, you know, um, spiritual. It's like, you know, it's not religion. So they're going to tell you what, what spirituality is by saying it's not religion because religion means like holding back, you know, from that religio, that Latin thing, right? Well, why don't they take you to the Latin or the root of the word spirituality? Getting to the root, well, the root of the word spirituality is spirit. But when we ask a few folks about what spirituality is, just as a casual question, I mean, like, what is spirituality to them? I mean, we have an idea. I'm not an idea. We know what we're talking about, but we want to know, like, okay, what was their perspective? Because we always can, you know, learn, you know, iron sharpen iron, or we may, may pick up on something, from, you know what I mean, from someone else, right? You know, and then they'll go to spiritual. They'll say, they'll define spirituality by saying they're into spirituality because they are spiritual. I'm like, okay, well, now, now you're forcing me to ask the next question. So what is spiritual? But really, we say really will they get to the point of spirit. And if they get to spirit, what is the definition of spirit? You, you know what I'm saying? But most folks, see, we need a meme, some memes out there. We already got the memes on religion. You know, religion is religio. Religio is holding back. It's like holding back our spirituality. <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on for a moment. Holding back our spirituality, really? Well, I think that might be true. At least their confusion of the truth is true, is real, is real. It's real that they're confused about what they're talking about. It's like they're aspiring for something, but they haven't reached there because they haven't taken the time, right, you know, to get to know what they're talking about. Because folks talking about spirituality, for example, this is, this is a good place to start right here, what we got on the Google, right? Went to Google. Right, the God of these latter days and times, this world system, right? Google, so to speak. <laughs> it says spirituality involves the rec wait, wait, you, know, you, you note that right there. It says spirituality involves, not spirituality is. Well, spirituality, spiritual, spirituality is such and such and such. No, it says spirituality involves. See, I'm still not. We're still not getting the definition of what we're talking about. See, when we talk about religion, they go to religio. Religio, according to an interpretation of the etymology, comes from the Latin word they say to mean holding back, tying back. Like holding back what? They tell us, you know, holding back our spirituality. Therefore, a lot of people saying, well, I'm not into religion. I'm spiritual. I'm into spirituality. And it seems like they're saying that I'm into something good. Religion is something bad. And spirituality is something good. But see, because they don't recognize the root of what they're talking about, they don't recognize that you could be into spirituality and be into some evil, some bad, some not hurtful, not helpful <laughs> spirituality. But you won't know that if you don't know what spirit is. Right? And the Bible has a, the scripts has a verse where it talk about, I think, discerning spirits. You know, discerning spirits. Right? Well, in order to discern spirits, it's like saying, um, discerning, um, discerning, let's see, discerning mm, alligators. You know, I'm just trying to think of something, discerning 
discerning something, I don't know what it is. Say, I don't know this terminology you're talking about. I'm trying to think of something that, like, a ter- I'm trying to think of a terminology of, of something that I don't know what it is. But let me just pick out something. Discerning, discerning, if I say discerning nefs, nefesh, my, um, <laughs> nafshot, my ne- nefes, you know, nefs, nefsoch. Like, say, say if I said it to you, discerning nefsoch, right? Right? Or discerning uh, menphysite. Let me use that word. Discerning menphysite. Bro, you got to discern menphysite. Right? If I said that to you, you'd be like, what? What is menphysite? Right? If I said discerning ruchot, ruchot, which is the Hebrew of, you know, um, you know, menphysite, 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 in that sense right there. Just correcting myself right there. If I say discerning ruchot, you say, bro, yo, yo, what's ruchot? I said, you know, Ruchot. You have to discern Ruchot, brother. You got to discern Ruchot. But, but what is Ruchot? You have to know what Ruchot is so you can be able to discern right, Ruchot. The same thing we're saying right here with this whole spirituality thing. Right? Because here, this the Google tells us that spirituality involves what it involves. What we're trying to know here is what is spirituality. Because many folks that have been talking about they are like champions you know they're like cheerleaders for spirituality give me a s give me a p give me a i give me a r give me a i give me a t give me a u give me a a give me a l give me the i give me a t give me a y why spirituality i said like, wow that sounds good man i want to get down i'll get down up which way are you going all right but what is it <laughs> and it doesn't seem like the spiritual folks can really define. It's almost like they're trying to tell me because I don't know what they are talking about that I guess I either don't got no spirit or spirituality ain't for me or maybe religion. It's because you into that Bible. That Bible's about religion. Mm, the Bible's about a book. I, a book is about knowledge or narrative, you know, it could be a story could be a history you know it could be wise sayings it could be poetry you know what i mean it could be a lot of things in the book information you know but you're telling me now the book is about religion now you come with this spirituality thing and for all your spirituality you have failed failed many ones have failed not y'all but many ones have failed to define spirit so this, this is his kooky definition. We're going to move forward. Just bear with me. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Spirituality, to say, involves the recognition of a feeling. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You, you heard what they said right there? Spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling. A feeling or a sense. So here's the question. Is feeling sense and is sense feeling? <laughs> Or belief. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on for a moment. Spirituality, according to this definition right here, from RC Psych dot A C U K. What? What? Hold on for a moment. What site is this? Hold on for a moment, brothers and sisters. I'm just curious about this RC. Oh, oh. Look, look at this. This is actually something that you can download. Okay, let's do this right here, and we're gonna come back to this right here. Let's go over here. Okay, it's, it's opening up there. Okay, let's go back to this right here. We'll take a look at that right Just the, Just this first part of the definition. And then we're going to get to the roots. The roots of real spirituality. Right? The roots of real spirituality. Most people talking about spirituality cannot or have not even yet defined spirit. Most people talking about spirituality don't talk about breath. And are not dealing with the breath. I mean, when I say deal with the breath, not just talking about breath, but also dealing with their own breath and the breath, breath, spirit, breath. You know, espiritus, espiritus is breath. In this whole so-called definition or rambling or opinion or whatever, it says what spirituality involves, not what spirituality is. Spirituality involves the recognition, the recognition of what? The recognition of a feeling. Or sense or belief. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. Th- I thought religion involves belief. And they're trying to get us out of religion because religion was holding us back. And therefore, we need to be free to be spiritual spiritual with spiritual people, right? That's what they're saying. And spirituality. But now they're talking about a feeling. 
right? A feeling or a sense. Hmm. The elders used to teach us that feelings are for blind people and creeping things. I don't know if you're going to get it. You know what I mean? But feelings. Now, now this, of course, I know some of y'all might be upset because y'all deal a lot with feelings. So people who deal a lot with feelings and get what we just said right there, that feelings are for blind people and creeping things. It's not saying it as an absolute, but just as a, a wisdom saying, if you can receive the wisdom there. But here they say that spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling or sense or belief that there is something greater than myself. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. Whoever wrote this, I think there is something greater than yourself. And that's the real meaning of the word spirituality. That's the real meaning of the root of the word spirituality or spirit. They say something more to being human than sensory experience. Hmm. And that the greater whole of which we are part is cosmic or divine in nature. Now, oh my gosh. Cosmic is one thing. Cosmic is the world, the universe. And divine, well, mm, how much time we have here, right? Divine in nature. So this is one of these guesstimate answers. This is, this is like guesstimate spirituality. But it is, like it says, the personal, a personal exploration, right? How do you define, right? How do you define, let's go down here. The first sentence here, part of the first sentence says, spirituality can be defined generally as an individual search for ultimate or sacred meaning and purpose in life. What, what a la la. My goodness. Spirituality can be defined generally as an individual search. So I thought spirituality pertains to being spiritual. And spiritual pertains to the spirit. I thought that was the definition. Now what we have to define is what is spirit. But here Wikipedia says spirituality, according to its, um, its uh, April 3rd, 2022 definition or, or entries, right? You know, it's crowdsourcing. So people, you know, they quote certain books or whatever. So it, it's kind of based on what people are inputting. You know what I mean? You know, so it kind of reflects. You know, the consciousness, so to speak. Spirituality can be defined generally as an individual search for ultimate or sacred meaning and purpose in life. That sounds like the other definition. Sounds like the same bot wrote it, right? Sounds like the same bot wrote the same thing. But still, it has not defined nothing. Now, see, they have etymology here, right? Etymology. Let's just go to this one. How do you define spiritual? Okay, it goes back to that same one. You see what I'm saying? Some might say, well... Here, yes, what is spirituality? That's the same definition we was on. And it's examples of spirituality. Let's get some examples. Maybe we'll get it now. The fact or state of being incorporeal. Now they want to send us to the dictionary again. Incorporeal, that means not, not in a body. Like not in the body. Like not in the body, right? Corpus, corpse, right? Body, right? Spirituality is the state of having a connection to God or the spirit world. Okay, yeah. You're giving us some of what it involves, but not the root, but let's go on. An example of spirituality is praying every day. Religious devotion or piety. Mm. Now this is from your dictionary. <laughs> this is from yourdictionary.com. <laughs> All right, but just take note, take note, take note. How do you practice spirituality? Right? Now, notice. Now, see, the first thing it says right here, right, is the first item is take yoga class and practice cheer yoga at work. I don't know what the hell is it talking about, right? Dedicate 15 minutes each day to writing in a journal. Okay. Listen to a guided audio meditation. Join a spiritual community. You mean a community that's not corporeal? <laughs> Such as a church? Well, that's, you know, a prayer group or meditation center to share a contemplative experience with others. Now, all this is very nice. Now, I want, I want one to know that all this is very nice. All this can be helpful. But it's like, why are you going to get all the accessories, right, if you don't have a, the, your main outfit? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're going, we're going out someplace, right? And we have to, you know, dress and 
you know, presentable, all that, right? And then we're in the store and we're supposed to be searching for an outfit. And somebody's over there looking at the accessories. Oh, look at this accessory. Look at that accessory. Look at, we need to get an outfit. In other words, we need to get the root of what, and all of them are missing the mark here. This is what I'm trying to say right here by this vlog. When ones talk about, especially from a Western Gentile, we'll say the Judeo-Christian, the popular, right, Judeo-Christian. I'm saying all Jews and Christians, many, many, you know, well, there are, there are few that know this truth that we're about to share, that we're sharing here with you, right? But what's interesting in the East, you know, looking to the East, right, you know, to some of the Eastern so-called religions, and notice that the Western Gentile, like the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity and, you know, the Anglo-European religionism, you know, that we get this, this kind of religious, um, um, what do you call it, um, our... Um, um, preset, um, what do you call it, like with a disease or something like this, say like watch out depends on your um, prior, uh, your prior, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the phrase right now, you know, um, you know, like, like when it said like if you take a certain drug or something like that, you got to like make sure that, you know, you see your doctor because you might have like a pre-existing condition, there we go, pre-existing condition. So based on our pre-existing Western whitewashed Gentile conditioning, you know, regarding Bible and church and Jesus and God and religion and all of that indoctrination, they almost never speak about the breath. The only time they speak about the breath or the breath of life, sometimes is usually when they're eulogizing somebody or when they're thinking about, oh, that person didn't do the right thing. They didn't value the breath of life, you know, like, you know, in a sense, but they don't teach that spirituality and truth it begins like in the beginning even of the we say of the bible with the breath of life and what's interesting about a lot of so-called um you know eastern you know what's called some eastern um religions or some eastern um practices right is that there is more of an emphasis on the breath and see the breath and breathing, right? And what is in the breath. I mean, the, the teaching, the science of the breath itself should be, right? As we see in the Hebrew Bible in the very beginning, right? It speaks about Yahweh, Hashem Elohim, right? Jehovah, the power, the powers, the Elohim breathing, right? Into man, right? the breath of life you know what i'm saying and man became a living soul that there is the beginning principles of true spirituality in the scripture in the bible but see one has to recognize what is spirit and what is spirituality like is this spirituality in this picture or is this um you know, having the sun in your face, you know, enjoying the warm rays of the sun in your face. Or some might say sun worship. But I just say is it the sun in your face, right? You know, is this spirituality? Cause remember, they say spirituality involves that which is not corporeal. In other words, that which is not, um, we say carnal, right? That which is not material, right? That which is spiritual. Right, is that which is not material. But it seems like a lot of people's focus on spirituality, like, you know, when they say spirituality products. Now, true, I think books and instructions may be considered products, but they got a lot of other goofy stuff that have nothing to do my, with anything. It's like playing with people, what it says, it involves a recognition of a feeling or sense or belief. It's playing, it's psycho babble. That's what it is. It's playing with people's feelings senses and their beliefs while trying to take people out of what they call it's like they used to say you know you jump out of the the, the frying pan and into the fire <laughs> and so some people they jump out of so-called religion and organized religion and many times without proper instruction and certain basic principles they, they're jumping into the fire I kind of share this one right here mind body and soul Right? I thought it was spirit, soul, and body. See, that's the right order. Spirit, soul, and body. 
because see the mind is a very interesting thing the mind can be the mind of the spirit right it can be the mind of the soul if it's the mind of the spirit we're speaking about a higher mind if it's the mind of the soul, we're speaking about the interface mind. See, the soul is where the feelings, the emotions, um, the active um, will, right? um, the affections, the sense of self. See, the soul, she, she, the soul, she. See, that's also something that folks don't know. They're not taught this, especially in the Judeo-Christian Right, you say the Judeo-Christian so-called religions, right, or quote spiritualities. Well, if 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 you're practicing like a Judeo-Christian, you know, Jewish or a Christian form of so-called religion, and you start to really get into spirituality, hopefully you're getting into you know the science of the Bible, because in the very beginning of the Bible shows that in a true, we say the Hebrew way, right, or Judaic way, the Hebrew and the root of real for lack of a better word, Christianity, right, is true spirituality. But if you don't get those principles in the beginning, right, if you don't get them in the beginning, here, let's get to the principles here. Here is an easy way, right? Now, Spanish-speaking people, I say Spanish-speaking people because when they say espiritus, espiritus, you know, espiritus, we say spirit as English-speaking, like English-speaker, we say spirit, and it can mean a whole lot of different things. It all depends on how it's said and, you know, wink, wink. What does it really mean? You get this. You know, it's, it's tricky. English is a tricky language. It's a Babylon, Babylonian language. It's a confusion, right? There's a lot of confusion, right, you know, in the English language. This is why the principle that we have even from the scriptures to study to show ourselves approved is very, very important. Here in Latin, spiritus, right? Because the word spirit in English today basically comes from Latin. Look, the root of the word is to blow, right? It's to blow as like, right, ear and breath, right? You know, let's keep it higher, 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 right? A breathing is speaking about the blowing, the breath in breathing, breathing, spiritus. Think about it for a moment. For all this talk, 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 you have people talk about spirituality. I'm not into religion. I'm a spiritual person. And I'm like, well, what do you do? I be spiritual. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't eat so much meat no more. I, I eat more organic food. Okay, you being spiritual and you're talking about food. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm spiritual. And, and, and they'll talk on and on and tell you about a lot of great things. Right? But they're missing the whole mark. You talk about the word for sin in the Hebrew, right? Chet and chatiat, right? Chata means to miss. They really, really miss the bullseye. They miss the bullseye and they fall short, proverbially speaking, of the glory of Elohim for human beings, right? A breathing. Spiritus is a breathing. You see what it says? Respiration and of the wind breathing respiration look at the word spiration look at the word inspiration in what in who spiration in spirit right respiration inspiration in spirit right in what in breathing breath right then they go into some other you could say add-ons here it says breath of a god mm -hmm. from our um we could say Judeo-Christian perspective, we could say, yeah, you know, we get that like in Bereshit, you know, in Genesis chapter 1 and in chapter 2, you know what I'm saying? Inspiration, that's what the man Adam, according to Genesis chapter 2, he got that inspiration when Yahweh hey, Elohim breathed into him the breath and the shama. Right, of the high chayim, right? And man became, get this, man became a living soul. Now what's interesting, here's what's interesting, that in the Hebrew, right, and the Afro-Semitic, we could say the Kamo Hamito Semitic, the Semito Hamitic, the Afro-Asiatic languages of like Hebrew, like and and Amharic of the King of Kings, you know, and Gutz, 
you know, um, spirit, like, like, or soul. Let's touch on soul right here. Soul, when man became a living soul, soul, right, is feminine. Right? Here's the interesting thing when we start to study the scripts and the scriptures. Right? Soul is she, indubitably, right, throughout the scripture, whether in he or she, soul is she. I like that there. That might help me to articulate this. Because some of y'all know we've been, you know, this is like a recurring, um, not just a point, but a recurring principle. See, it's the recurring principles that then start to help us to understand. You know, the text, the super text, the text itself, and also the subtext. So the soul, right, and he and she is she, right? Just to point that out. And we're talking Hebraically, right? Hebraically, right? Just to put that there, put it in, a, in the context. We're not talking about other languages or whatnot like that. We're looking at Hebrew, right? Because we're looking at the root of this Judeo and especially for the Christians, you know, because a lot of the ones fall out of Christianity. You know, could they say they, they want to, they, they didn't get enough spirituality. You know, they got too much religion. They got too much organized religion. And unfortunately, you might think you was in the organized religion, but it was disorganized if one of the first lessons, right, or no lessons, right, was about breathing. And no lessons connect simply, you know, they taught the Holy Spirit. But you know what they do? And a lot of this is because of also the translations, you know, and the mistranslations that have crept in. They say Holy Ghost. Ghost. Right? And the ghost, right, is said to be the disembodied spirit of a dead person. Think about that for a moment. Mm. The ghost. So what are they talking about? So the ghost is something that they, they overwrite. Right, that's not right. That they overwrite onto the scripture. So you have people arguing even today about, you know, could they could they uh, are bibliolators? You know, like an idolater, they're bibliolators. So because they check for KJV, right, and KJV over here in the translation, it happens to say the ghost. They're going to defend that word ghost, right? Even if King James and the translators were were able to be raised from the dead right now, and they say, hey, you know what? We learned that that was an error in our translation. You got some fools today who are bibliolators, like idolaters, that would defend that and not even do due diligence to study and show themselves and prove and say, you know, KJV is good in other ways, but here it's off. It's off right here. So many ones have left. You hear, I hear one saying they left the Christian church. They've been looking, you know, whether into some black history or black culture among some of our folks, you know, or, or African culture or spiritualities because they want to be more spiritual, right? But when is the lesson, right, concerning breathing taught? See, we find it to be ironic and interesting that in among the Hindus and the yoga, right, they know yoga and yogi, Right? Yoga means yoke. Remember when Romeno, our rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, he says, take my yoke upon you. You know, that's what yoga, yoga means. It's like a yoke. Right? But the yoke is in a sense of a discipline. Right? It's a discipline. Remember, the real Christians, the real Christians, right? And were, were disciples. They were called Nazarenes. Right? But they were disciples. Right? So, see, real Christians, right? are supposed to be disciples. And disciples is a way of saying special students. Right? It's basically a student, but uh, like a special student or a student that is devoted to a special teaching, that teaching of Robeno, I and I Rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach, speaking about Jesus Christ, yet Jesus Christos, our Rabbi. Right? So breathing. Right? Remember, even in the New Testament of the Bible, it says that Ha Adon Yeshua, he breathed. He breathed on his disciples. Shall I find that verse right there? <laughs> to show the importance of breath? Yes, yes. Let's find that verse right there. He breathed on his disciples. And what did he say to them? He said to them to receive. Right? Let's go right here. We were studying. Yeah, we was up in Job for a moment. <laughs> right? Right here, here, here. Um, and he breathed. Right? Let's go right here. Breathe, back that up. Breathe. Right, let's go right here. It'll correct me. You know, because it's so smart, right? Now notice, we looked at the word breathe. 
breathe. There's four verses for breathe. And notice the first verse is um, Bereshit, Genesis 2 and 7. And Yahweh had Elohim formed man of the Afar of the Adama. Form Adam of the Afar of the Adama. Anything sounds familiar here? Form Adam of the Afar of the Adama. Let me bring it out. Form Adam of the Afar, right, of the Adama. So who is Adam's mother, right? And breathe, and what? And breathe, right? Here we have nafach, nafach, right? Nafach, nafach, breathe. You see the breathe, to blow, stiff at, to seethe, right? Give up or lose, right? Life, like, like that's the expiration. So we have inspiration, like breathing out, right? To, to breathe, to blow, to breathe, to be blown, to cause, to breathe out. So here we have the breathing out. Here we have, from the Strong's definition of the BDB, is to puff, mm -hmm. to inflate, you know, like a balloon. If you blow up a balloon, right? right? To blow hard, to scatter, to, to kindle, expire, this is steam. So these are some of the other contexts right here. But the basic tense and sense that's being used here as BDB has it to breathe, right? To blow, to breathe, like almost in a sense like somebody blow up a, a balloon. So to speak. So he breathed into what? He breathed into the af. Right? The af. Interesting, the word for nose and nostril in the Hebrew is af. Now, why is af so very interesting? Because af elsewhere, even this verse in the scripture where it's got the anger, at least the translation says the anger of Yahweh, of Yahweh, Yahweh, right? It says the anger. But you can see here from the BDB that directly it's nostril. It's associated with the nose. You know, there's two holes, you know, the nostrils, right? And then the nostril, the nose and the nostrils is like the face. It's on the face. But the secondary, because Hebrew has like this divine duality. There's the two truths to the Hebrew. Like there's the, the outer sense and there's the inner sense. You see what I'm saying? There's the outer sense and the inner sense because it's known by proper breathing techniques and breathing discipline and discipleship that one can regulate right, what seems to be their unregulatable emotions. Did you know that? Did you know that, that our emotions, anger and even fear can be regulated by the breath, by the what? The spirit. See, it's talking about sp true spirituality, real spirituality, real things, right? Real results, applied science, science you can apply. Not like some spookism that's way out there, you know, after you die, maybe you'll learn that, you know, why should one learn at the end, right, that their breath is their spirit and they should have focused on it. They should have become more in tune with it. They shouldn't have it just taken it so involuntarily. You, you know what I mean? Vo Voluntary. Like like involuntarily, you know, like our involuntary breathing, we pay no attention to it. I'll give you a little example. You ever notice if you're conscious enough, because some of us are not conscious enough, but when we start becoming conscious, we start to notice when we start to get angry or afraid or something in our emotions, feelings, thoughts, emotions, and that their links with the expressions of the of the nefesh of the soul, right? that we start to notice that our breath gets irregular, right? Like, if you notice, sometimes when people get upset or angry, they have a tendency sometimes to pass out, right? And the thing that we tell some folks when they get upset and angry is, just breathe, just breathe, no, 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 calm down, just breathe. Why do we do that? Because we as the observer is observing this person about to pass out or something gonna, it's something that we know that their spirit is almost gonna leave them. You know, if they don't get a hold, so to speak, right, of their breath, right, by the, the, the get a hold of their breath by the conscious hands of their, of their spirit mind, right, of their self, their, their soul, right, because the soul is interesting, the breath and the soul, right, and we recognize what the real definition of what the soul is. You see, because if we don't, then we're reading areas of the scripture, of the Bible, right, from beginning to end. Or, for example, Psalms. 
it's impossible to apply the science of Psalms to our life and liberty if we don't know what the spirit is and what the soul is. The only thing that most ones know right, when they enter into one of these so-called religions, organized religion, Judeo-Christian church, they know what the body is. Because the preacher tell you about the body, like the flesh and the flesh and the flesh and the body and sin and flesh and the body, the body. But our spirit and our spirit and our soul, I give your soul to the Lord. But what does that mean in practical terms? In practical terms. Like there's a psalm, right? There's a particular psalm that where David, right? King David is, is ascribed to David where he is talking to his soul right you ever come across that in the scripts where somebody is talking to their soul or they say oh my soul why are you so and so it's the most interesting thing when we read it in the hebrew right or even in the king of kings bible in the royal amharic the pure language it comes off as he is speaking to she it's almost as a man speaking to his wife man speaking to like you know you say his girlfriend or his close intimate female my counterpart it's interesting but then in the beginning it says that yahuwah elohim breathed right you know into who let's go right here he breathed right into his nostrils adam's nostrils the breath now the breath here is the word neshama we have neshama here neshama Right? Now, it's a very interesting teaching right here, and we're just touching on some of the basics to just say these are some of the basic components of real spirituality according to the Bible, right? according to the Hebrew scriptures. Right? And we know what Robeno Yeshua, right? what Jesus called Jesus, right? our rabbi Jesus, what he says. Right? He says that to the Samaritan woman, y'all worship that which you know not. We know what we worship of salvations of the Yehudim, right? is of the Judahites. So there's an important point to be made that the context of even the teachings of Robeno Yeshua are in the Hebrew mind, right? Not the Western Gentile mind. This is where all the confusion comes in. This is why people can talk about being a Christian in church all the time, and but then they notice that... The, the spirituality aspect was missing, right? It's because the breath was missing, right? There was never any teaching on spirituality based on the Bible and based on the Word. The Word. What it says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word. The Word. So, what's the Word? The Word is spirituality. What's the Word? The Word is spiritual. What's the Word? The root of those words is spiritual. And what is spirit? Well, here, we're touching on it right here, 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 even in the beginning. Now, note what we said about Robeno, my right? I, Rabbi Yeshua. Let's go over here. We're in John 20, 22. Oh, my goodness. Ja. <laughs> Rastafari. Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem. Yo, check it out. This is 2022. <laughs> Maybe this is the year. Right? The great awakening, right? <laughs> that great awakening, right? The beta Israel awakening, you know what I mean? That, that spirituality awakening, right? Of John's people, once lost, now found, right? Because first to the Yehudim, to the Judahites, you know? Even I and I, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, right? And then to the Gentiles, all other nations, right? Because we got to get this right and accurate. To be worthy to minister or administer this to humanity. But here's what's interesting. Some of humanity understands some of these things even better than some of those who are Jews or Christians or Hebrews or Israelites. I know some of the Israelite brothers, oh, you're going into that Eastern stuff. Oh, they worship. Well, what they worship? All right. When you look through, when I look through, I'm going to show you a book here about breathing exercises. And one thing I said about many of the Hindu yogi kind of teachings, two important books, right, that I'll just mention right here. One is called 
the Hindu yogi breathing exercise. I'll show you the cover by Yogi Rama um, Charaka or Charaka. And then the other one by the same author is the Hindu yogi practical water cure. But one thing I love about these books in keeping, being Torah observant, is that there is no um, God, Godiology. You know, there's no Godiology. That's my coining of another way of saying, you know, um, theology. <laughs> well, theology is, is, is different than Godiology, right? Most ones are dealing with what we call is Godiology, right? Godiology. You need to do a vlog on that because we know others are going to pick up and run with it. But it's all right because, you know, we got the Isla Irit, the Holy Spirit. But here in John 20, 22, right? Okay. Right? In John, you know, 20, <laughs> right? In John 20, 22, right? Just to make the point. I think there's a disc in there. Yeah. In 2022, right? It says, and when he had said this, speaking of, Jesus, Ayusu, Yeshua, Robeno, Adonainu. Right? He, he breathed. He did what? He breathed. Uh oh. He breathed. Now here's the coin of Greek. He infusao. He infusao. You know what infusao is in English? To emphasize. <laughs> infusao. 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 But really what it means is to, to blow, to breathe upon, right? Like when you emphasize a point, you breathe upon because you're speaking the word. And whenever we speak a word, we, we must have breath. Every word that a living human being speaks must be accompanied by breath. Speak one word without breath. You cannot speak one word audibly. You know, we can maybe say a word in our mind, right? But even that, there's a spirit there as well. But we cannot, in, in the object lesson, right, we cannot speak any word with our breath. So the word always accompanies breath. Now think about this in the sense of Hashilush HaKadosh, right? When we say the Holy Trinity, the Hebrew triunity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the triple male, right? See, because wisma, right, wisma or wisdom, was there in the beginning, right? B'reshith. It's not in the beginning, actually, it's in beginning, in wisdom. B'reshith. Reshith is chokmah. Chokmah is the Hebrew wisdom. And Yeshua, Yesu, says that wisdom is justified by all of her children. Mm. Our father. So who is our mother? You know, one would say, well, if we have a father, we got to have a mother. These are questions that many Christians have probably been asked but could not answer. Some might say, well, the church is our mother. What did Yeshua, what did Jesus, what did Jesus, or as some say, what did Jesus say, right? According to the language of the Gentiles, what did Jesus say? He said that wisdom is justified by all of her children. Mm -hmm. That's in the Bible as well. Right, look it up, look it up. Um, we just want to focus on this right here, right? So, here you can see that he breathed on in Fusao, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive y'all the Holy Spirit. Now, here you see where the word is Numa, right? You see what the word is? The word is Numa, right? You see, you see that word Numa, right? Let's see if we can do this. Right here, just to show you, share a point in a point, right? A point in a point. Let's look up ghosts in the Bible, right? And we want to focus our attention on the New Testament. And we want to focus our attention on the Gospels, right? In the Gospels, there is a particular Gospel. Um, pray to I, forgive I, because um, we didn't remember the exact verse, right? But there is a verse in the Gospels, right? Where they said right here, you see what it says right here? He yielded up the ghost. The ghost is the spirit, right? Right? So when you see ghost is the spirit, right? Where's that verse where it says that? And they thought they had seen, right? But they thought they had seen a ghost, right? They thought they had seen a ghost. Okay, here we see ghost, ghost. All that right there where it says holy, right? It's the pneuma, pneuma, right? The pneuma. I think it's in John's gospel, right? Pneuma. 
Let's go through all. So all these places, not one of these places, notice, not one of these places did they say Holy Spirit. Maybe they felt because he gave up the ghosts, the ghosts, you, you, you get that idea right there? But still, it is something that one should be taught because as you, when you find this out for yourself, why right, they thought they had seen, oh, my bad. It says, actually, look, look at the mix-up they do. They thought they had seen a spirit, right? Let's put thought, right? Thought, right? They thought they had seen a spirit, right? Right here, right? They thought they had seen, right, a spirit. Let's okay, seen a spirit. I think this is when Yeshua was walking on water, right? This is a little bit off on what we're saying right here. But hopefully we can. There we go. Luke 24, 37. But they were terrified. Okay, instead of thought, they say suppose. Suppose when you look at what the word suppose, my thought, opinion, be of the opinion to think. Right? But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Now you see this? Now look at how, in a sense, twisted the translation is and we're not saying that blaming this on king james and not even the translators of the time but for us in this dispensation right ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free from the lies the lies right that prevent or stop or distort our true spirituality and true spirituality Right? Luke 24, 37 says, but they were terrified and affrighted because Yeshua was walking on water. This is the part where he was, um, um, no, 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 no. Not when he was walking on water, but here, this is the part where um, he has showed up amongst them. Right? He, he kind of just, um, you know, stood in the midst of them. It says right here, it says, um, and thus they spake with Yeshua himself, stood in the midst of them. And says to them, peace be upon them. So he he shows up in the midst of them, right? And they had thought they had seen a spirit. Let's bring it back up here. Oh man. Well, there we go. They had thought they had seen a spirit. Let's click on the word G4151. Now note, everywhere where you see ghosts or holy ghosts, the underlying word is Numa. Numa is the equivalent of the Hebrew word ruach. Ruach. So when I said, um, you know, um, 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 Ruchot, right, Ruchot, right, Ruchot, Ruchot is, I'd say, spirits in that sense, right, the spirits in the plural sense, like to discern spirits, like you have to discern Ruchot. If I said that to you, you don't know the word Ruchot, you never heard the word Ruchot before, you might say, well, what is Ruchot, right, and I say, well, you got this, Ruchot, that's like Ruach. That's how you know Ruach, right? Ruachi, Ruachi, Ruchi, Ruchi. You know, I start to give you other Hebrew terms. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but you would need a definition. Same thing when one says spirituality. But here, look at the trick business. And this verse here in Luke 24, 37 shows the trick with the majority. Not all, not all, not all. The majority of pseudo so-called spirituality out there. It's just another product and byproduct. Right here, we look at the G forty one fifty one. It says Numa. Right, it says Numa right here, here. All right, all right, all right. Something, something interesting right here, here, here. Now, Luke. Now, I was correct with what I was saying, right, about walking on water. It's the walking on water scene. Now, notice how Luke translates as Numa. Now, in Luke, it's it's correctly translated. The other place of ghosts is not. But here it is when he was walking on water. It's in Mark, Mark 4, um, 649 and Luke 14, 26. We'll bring it up by searching out spirit and cried. Spirit and cried. Do both of them say cried out? Spirit and cried out. Right? To narrow down our search. Right? Here, spirit and cried out. So here, here we go right here. Here we go, brothers and sisters. Now notice this right here. And when the disciples, the Talmudim, saw him walking on the sea, on the sea that is, right, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Now note this right here. The G5326. Now we know it's different than the 41-something, the previous one, right? Here it says, 
phantasma. This is the point. That most ones who talk about spirituality today are dealing with phantasma. Phantasma. Right? And most of counterfeit Christianity is also dealing with phantasma. What is phantasma? Phantasma. Right? Phantasma is an appearance, an apparition, a specter. Right? But phantasma is where we get phantasm, like fantasy. We get fantasy in, in, in English today. Right? The word fantasy. It comes from this. It's a mere show, phantasm. Right? But then you see how they translate this word as spirit. Then we get to phantasmo. Phantasmo. Right? To make something appear. Right? But this is what, what we get in the English of uh, fantasy and phantasm. So this is one of the verses. And here over here, notice this one right here. Here when the unclean, right, the unclean spirit, it's an unclean, right, pneuma. And pneuma, they say the third person, the triune, the holy, notice it's holy spirit, right, holy spirit, right. And now, now when we get into a breakdown of this, let's break this down. We're talking about spirituality here, right. So we already established one point, important point of the spirit, right, is breath and breathing. Right? One point of the spirit, a very important point of the spirit, a spiritus is breath and breathing. Right? Just to make this link right here, 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 right? With a spiritus, we see a breathing, right? A breathing, inspiration, breath of life, life, also as disposition, character, right? It says high spirit, vigor, courage, pride, also in a sense, a negative sense, right? Arrogance, right? And then notice right here, here's where the confusion comes in. Also note this, that there's a confusion in Christianity and most, we could say, Abrahamic um, religion, especially Christianity, between spirit and soul. People confuse the spirit for the soul and the soul for the spirit. We can see it right here. Where spirit and esprit, esprit, right, is both defined as spirit and soul, right? And here we have spirit in the mid 13th century. They define it as animating a vital principle in man and animals. All right. So getting once again to the root idea, the very root idea is just like the Hebrew. You see, uh, to blow, right? the, the, the breath, in a sense of breathing, the connection with breath and breathing. All right. Now let's go to the next level. My, the next level of spirituality right here. Now, you'll notice something with this unclean spirit. So we're just talking about what spirit is, right? As we see over here, unclean spirit. So it's a G4151. See, what they should have said in the English is an unclean ghost. But then that will make people think there's a clean ghost. So it's probably good that they didn't do that. But when they say holy ghost, the ghost aspect is what links with the phantasm. See the phantasm in the in the phantasmo, like in the in the Greek, brings out the sense of the English sense of ghost. Right? So here, 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 as we scroll down right here to six and nine of Mark, right? It says, and when they saw him, Yeshua, walking upon the sea, so it's the same scene here, they supposed, that means they thought it had been a spirit and cried out right and they shouted out they screamed out right they thought it was a phantasma you know phantasm fantasy a phantasm a specter apparition like a ghost like a spook basically these verses here mark 649 right shows the sense of spookism but notice that they translated as a spirit but then the holy spirit they confounded and translated as a ghost. So you see these, these subtle confusions, right? These subtle confusions right here, right? And so here, looking at this word for pneuma for a moment, when we say touching on spirituality. Now we look at it in the sense of hashilush hakadosh, the Hebrew triunity, the third. Now person is somewhat uh, confusing in the English because we have the word panai and panim. It's the face, right? And often when used in the Hebrew, the face with he who be who he be, interestingly enough, is often in a plural sense. Though he be one, 
his face, his interface, right? His interface. In the English sense, in the Christian sense, they usually speak about the persons of the Trinity. In the Hebrew sense, it's, it's the face. Like when it says the face of God, like the face of God, right? Like what happened at Pineal, 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 we say the Pineal, that's in the English sense, right? But then in the Hebrew is the Pineal, is the face of the power. It's the, it's the interface of the power. It's the, it's the perspective, the perception. Because when we say the word face, it can have the contextual context in the language as we would translate today and say interface. Like, look at that word, interface. Interface is like a word of like scientific technology. Oh, this interface, such and such and such. But then we have the same senses, right, in the spirit. Like, like we look at the letter, but the spirit of the letter, right, gives us that context there. That's why a lot of people miss the context because the context is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual matter. This is why, if you notice in the upper room of Zion, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them in that upper room. And the first thing they began to do was to converse, right, in language, to speak in tongues, right, without confusion, right? So they began to understand, like we're seeking to do here, okay, spirit, spirituality, they say it's this, but the word coming from Latin says this. Here's the root word coming down to breath. Hey, look at the Hebrew right here. The Hebrew has the same sense of breath. And look at it right here in the beginning of the book, right? So by the time we get to the Gospels of the Brit Hadasha in the New Testament, once we have the precepts, Right, the first principles and precepts, we can rightly, as the word says, rightly divide the word or explain the word, and also rightly apply the knowledge, the da'at, the scientia, the science of the word, right, to our lives and to our liberties, as well as to help others, right, if possible. Now, so the third person of the triune Elohim, right, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Co-equal, co-eternal with the Ab, right, Ha'ab, and with Habain. Sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes his personality and character, right? Ha-Ruach, where it says like the Spirit. So you'll see someplace where it says the Spirit, right? And what's interesting is that the Spirit in that context is He. Now there's a She aspect to Spirit, uh, you know what I mean? But here in referring to Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, right, and referring to Jah, Jehovah, right, the God and Father, you know, the, we're speaking of Him, Holy Spirit, He, right, so His personality or His face, His interface, right, and He has a character. See, when you discern, can discern spirits, you can discern the character, because there's many spirits. Right? Even the Bible speaks about the evil spirits, right? Like the poltergeist, the poltergeist, the zeitgeist, and the poltergeist are many spirits, right? So that's the spirituality many people are into because they get a lot of phantasmas, like a lot of phantasma, a lot of, you know, apparitions, like a lot of ghosts, duppies, right? Now, speaking of the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, Sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes, notice the word emphasize, breathes on, remember the word emphasize, his work and power, right? Never referred to as a depersonalized force, because some would say, well, the Holy Spirit is just force, it's just a depersonalized force. But if you study the scriptures, you recognize that that's a lie. Whether that's their own lie they thought of or whether they borrowed that lie from somebody else, it's a lie. It's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right, is never referred to as a depersonalized force. Then we have the Spirit, which is the vital principle by which the body is animated. Remember what's the Spirit, the animus, the animated principle, right? The Spirit is the vital principle by which the body is animated. Now, here's where it links here with the, we'll say, the higher mind, right? See, the, the mind of the 
feelings, emotion, the psyche is the soul. The psyche is the soul, right? The mind of the feelings, emotions is one sort of mind, right? But the higher mind, where they call it here, the rational mind. Right? from a kind of a psychological perspective, you know, the rational mind, the power by which the human being feels, thinks, and decides. Now here is where they bring in the soul. Now the spirit is not the soul. In other words, the spirit, he, is not she, the soul, but remember the marriage of the lamb, the two shall be one. Remember that principle? The two shall be one. Right? The two shall be one. A spirit, a simple essence, right? So when we speak about now a spirit, we're not speaking of the spirit. Now we're speaking about a spirit is that simple, that basic essence, essentia, that is devoid of all or at least all grosser matter. So when you talk about incorporeal, it's not in a corpse, it's not in a body, it's not material, right? And possess of the power of knowing, desiring, decide, deciding, and acting. Now we have what? A life-giving spirit, right? So here's spirit in some of the ways we find it in the scripts. A life-giving spirit, right? Remember that Adam, he breathed into Adam, right? The breath of life and, and the man, Adam, became a what? Living Soul, not a living spirit, but a living soul, a living nefesh, chai, right? Now, the human soul, a human soul that has left the body. So, when someone passes away, right, that human soul, that personality has left the body, but via the spirit leaving, right? Because the spirit, scripture teaches us, the spirit in man, man is a trinity. Just want to point that out as well. Man is the trinity. When we say man, the human being. The human being has spirit, soul, and body. Right? So when a human being like dies or passes away, that soul has left because the spirit was recalled. Right? That breath, in other words. You know, one's breathe in and breathe out. Right? But then there's that last breath, right? Where one is no longer able to breathe in. Right, and the spirit returns right to sender. Right? A spirit higher than man, but lower than God. So there are other spirits as well. Right? We say like the evil spirits, and there's other spirits, and there's the ministering spirits, like the angels are called ministering spirits. Right? Now notice this right here, talking about spirituality. It's used of demons too. Right? So there are demonic spirits. There are evil spirits who were, some say, conceived as cohabiting, right? At, were conceived as inhabiting, as inhabiting, right? That means taking up their habitation, taking up their abodes. So where are these spirits? I don't see no spirits. Well, remember, we say spirit, link it to breath, breathing. Have you ever seen somebody get so angry that somebody else had to tell them to calm down? They got so angry, and you see as they got angrier and angrier, how their breathing changed. Their breathing became more stunted and stilted. What do you think was inhabiting them? You ever got angry? I could admit getting angry, and I now, in hindsight, recognize, recognize those spirits because I had no control or I was not managing my breath, my spirit, right? And because of that, right, I was allowing... Right, these other entities to enter in through the spirit. Now remember, word is spoken by spirit. So the word and spirit connection is so not just deep but so important to understand. Secondarily, the spiritual nature or the nature of Moshiach, of the anointed of Christ, higher than the highest angels. So the spiritual nature or the nature of of Christos or the anointed Moshiach is higher than the highest angels and equal right to Elohim because the word made flesh the divine we're getting now to the word the spiritual essence the divine nature the divine nature of Christos of Moshiach then we have spirit as a disposition or influence Right? So these are the senses that as you read and study the scripture, that you'll see this word 
in different senses bringing out this to those who have the spirit to understand the script. The disposition or influence that fills and governs the soul. This is, this is where we have to show you this right here, right? Because we're already a little bit longer in this particular video, vlog, right, right here. But let's go right here. Let's go over here and let's take some of these examples right here, right? One of the first examples, one of the basics. Let's take this, right? This is one way of seeing it, right? This is one way of seeing it as a diagram, right? Right? So to miss the mark, right? If, this, if there's a bullseye here, right? What would the mark be here? The mark is spirit. Spirit is that inner core being, right? The inner core being, right? They say sensitive to Elohim. Sensitive is able to, I can say, it's a spirit that's able to interact with, it's our human spirit that's able to interact, right? Or interface, right? interface with Haruah, with the Holy Spirit, our human spirit. This is where Romans, I think it's Romans chapter 8 says that, um, you know, um, that, that his spirit testifies, bears witness with our spirit that we are children, right, of Elohim. His spirit bears witness of our spirit. But notice the spirit in man's relationship to the soul in man. Note that right there. Remember it said that Yahweh Elohim, right? The Hashem Elohim, he did what he breathed, right? He breathed into man the breath of life, right? And man became a living, right? A living soul, right? So it's that core, the core. Notice the position of the spirit to the soul. So the spirit is in the innermost of the innocence. The innocence, right, of the soul. In other words, the fuel of a soul is spirit. Let me say that again. The fuel of a soul and souls is spirit. Now, but here's the thing about spirit, right? Here's the thing about she, the thing about her, right? She can be a faithful soul to the true spirit and the Holy Spirit, or she can dabble with many different kinds of spirits, right? This is where it comes in where Mariam Magdalawit, right, is said to have had seven devils, seven demons. You remember that right there, right? Because they are spirits, right? They are spirits. I call them the poltergeist, the zeitgeist and poltergeist spirits. The Bible calls them evil spirits, right? So now we have our human spirit, right? The, the spirit that we have as a human being, a living human being, every human being in principle is a trinity, has spirit, soul, and body. See, that's the interface, right? That interface with, you know, with Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, with Hashilush Hakadosh, with the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, with the one Elohim. He's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but He is one power. That's why Elohim, in a sense, has a kind of a plural aspect to it but in the context of the Elohim of Israel right and the true Elohim right it's always in the singularity he's never to the poltergeist he never devolves to the poltergeist right he always maintains that singularity right that's why you hear folks talking about singularity right really it, it is why because they discover these things from ancient biblical study, ancient Egypt, other places. They start to discover little gems here and there, and you see them then starting to um, externalize the hierarchy, so to speak. Right? This is another way, right? The threefold nature. Some might call it the threefold nature of man, right? We have this in Hebrews, right? It's manifest in Hebrews 4 and 12, and also in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And we can also show you the Hebrew triunity, the Hebrew trinity also in the Old Testament as well, right? So this is just like more or less just to help one to understand, you know, the, okay, there's the likeness also with the tabernacle. We'll get into the tabernacle likeness, right? Now this is a little more um, detail here, right? But let's just go to a kind of a simple, a simple overview. 
this is one of the simple overviews right here that really brings it out but you notice that at the very center right at the very center right here is the Holy Spirit right that dot right there at the center at the center right of our spirit right if we are born again you know if we are reborn regenerated at the center of our spirit is the Holy Spirit let's show this right here since we're gonna just just follow the spirit here small still voice brothers and sisters you know I know sometimes the vlogs might go on for a moment and everything and maybe ones have to do something else but let's just go through this right here right so the disposition or influence which governs or fills the soul of anyone so if one has the Holy Spirit then the Holy Spirit right um, testifies of our spirit right that we are the children of Elohim let me bring up the verse brothers and sisters I want to go through this um, the BDB Browns Drivers Briggs right um, um, concordance and to sum up with the strong concordance but I like y'all to have this verse here for y'all to you know look at it and to see it you know get the truth for yourself you know to get this truth for yourself you know what we are speaking is truth but so hopefully ones will get it for themselves right right here 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 that um what is it Romans Romans chapter 8 just what is said here by Rabbi Sha Shaul Saul the apostle our brother the apostle to the Gentiles brother uh, Paulos he says this in Romans 8 8 and um, 8, 8 and 16 Romans 8 and 16 the spirit Ha Ruach itself like we say himself the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God that we are the B'nai Elohim right that we are the children of God Right? Now, for those who are not regenerated, who are not born again, and if we're honest, we can testify in our unregenerated, we should be able to be a witness to how we were, the difference, distinguish the difference that we are reborn, regenerated to us now and then us then. Right? We know that our disposition right, many times was influenced right, by what filled us, you know, the vibes. So that we call spirit vibes, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, that person got bad vibes, right? It's, and if that's true that they do have bad vibes, then you might be discerning something about their spirit, right? The disposition or influence that fills them or governs the soul of anyone, right? The A, the efficient source of any power, affection, emotion, desire. So sometimes people say, oh, so-and-so there... They're, they're, they just change. You know how sometimes people say that people change like, 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 you know, like one moment they're like this, next moment. Because many times there's influences of different spirits, right? Different spirits, right? And you know the tree, right, by its fruit. <laughs> so fifthly, right, the fifth BDB definition here for spirit and touch on true spirituality here is a movement of ear. See, beginning once again back to the very root, right? To the very root in Bereshith, Bereshith, in wisdom. So we say Bereshith, some say in the beginning, but they obviously don't know Hebrew is in beginning, in a beginning or in beginning. But then if they really know the scripts and can rightly discern the word, is based on Proverbs 4 and 7, the Hebrew compared with Genesis 1 and 1, we know that is in wisdom, in Chokmah. In the Hebrew is Chokma, Chokma, Chokma. In Chokma, right? In the Hebrew, Sophia, in wisdom, created in singularity, Elohim, the powers, He, the powers, He, the heavens and the earth. So, wisdom is there. And if you want to know more about wisdom in the beginning or even before. <laughs> so called the beginning, then go to Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter eight, right? I think round about verse 21, 22 to the end, right? But here, once again, spirit is a movement of ear. 
Here it says a gentle blast, for example, of the wind. Wind is spirit. Hence, the wind itself is also spirit. So the same word in the Hebrew that we call spirit, right, is the same word, right, that we refer to the wind, right? Now, notice the B, def the, the B entry, 5B. It says breath of nostrils or mouth. Uh-oh. So that means we have spirit in our nose when we breathe. Take a moment. Let's take a spiritual moment, y'all. See, this is how we really get into spirituality. It'd be like, let's take a moment, take a moment to breathe. You know, take a deep breath, breathe. Just that breath of life. You know, because sometimes we only appreciate it, appreciate love it, right? When something happens and we think we're going to lose it, right? Want it, want it, can't get to get to get it, right? right? Don't lose it, you know what I mean? So here, getting down to the root down here, Strong's definition brings out a current of air that is a breath or a breeze so in man in us as a human being it's the breath right now by analogy or even in a figurative sense a spirit notice what it says that is right the human in the human being it's the rational soul so there are irrational souls. So now we also have to define soul, brothers and sisters. Now we say that soul, right, is she, right? Soul, the soul is the seat, right, or the throne, right? The, what is the soul? The soul, the nefesh, she is the seat or the throne of our affections, our emotions, right? Our act of will, our desires, and, and basically our sense of self. Right? Now, if our soul is irrational, it's because it's devoid right, of the spirit, the spirit of truth. And we have other influences of other spirits, of the poltergeist, the seclorum, the world flesh and the satanic seclorum spirits right, that, are, that are influencing us. Now, by implication, now the basic implication of spirit is that vital principle, because for the soul... For the soul to, for, 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 the, for she, our soul to be, the spirit must be. In other words, without spirit, the soul dies. The source of the soul is spirit. Right? So think about this. If we look at this, we can even apply the principles here mechanically. You know, even to the principle of electricity, to the principle of the battery. When we understand what the so-called, the, the, the parts, you know, they say the sum is greater than the parts thereof, but once we understand what the, the parts, right, spirit, soul, and body, how they're defined, right, how they are outlined, and we start to look at the mechanics of it, we really begin to recognize the Hebrew science, and this is real world. But then it seems like a phantasm or a fantasy, right? based on the counterfeit Christianity where people be spending long times in churches and everything else, you know, we know that the Hebrews and Torah observant ones, they are at least able to discern a little better because they're getting to the very root of what many, you know, Western whitewashed Christians, you know, many of the black beta Israel is all on that apostasy and everything big time. You know what I mean? And think that they have the, the, the end all and be all in a translation, which is clearly a translation, and never bother to look at the origination, right? But spirit is the vital principle. Spirit also is a disposition. Like we might use the word, as I mentioned, vibes, like one's vibes, you know, positive vibes, right? Positive vibration, right? Negative, bad vibes. You say, somebody have bad vibes. Another way of saying it in a scriptural, biblical language is like bad spirit. Like evil spirit, right? Because the word evil, bad, or the word evil is also bad or hurtful, unkind, or ill. Not good, not healthy, right? The mental disposition, as one to one said among the Benjamites, you know, sister told me this, said bad mind is worse than obia, right? Bad mind is worse than obia. You know, sister, you know, I hear up, sister Sensi, yes, I. Because he, he was reasoning on it and was reasoning on it also with the scripts. But 
her saying bad mind is worse than obia and you know obia is a hebrew terminology it's interesting we can get into that in another area or you can look it up but bad mind is worse than obia right you know than than doing some like sorcery or witchcraft or something like that bad mind and in fact that's where it all begins <laughs> right from the mental disposition from the spirit this is why discerning spirits is so key because whether it's a human a superhuman, as one might say, an angel, a malak, you know what I mean? You know, whether it's a shed or the shadim, you know, um, a, a gan or the aganin, the demons, right? Or, not, here's an interesting thing, I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but you see how demon is spelled right there? I got to point out, this demon is different than the one without the A. The D-A-E-M-O-N, there's a different nuance because if you read Latin works, it'll talk about the good daemon. And the good daemon is the Holy Spirit because at its root idea, based on the linguistics, daemon, daemon, not demon, but daemon, right? Daemon is spirit. So usually when the Bible refers to demons, it's speaking about spirits. It's speaking about evil spiritualities. You see what I'm saying? But then daemon itself, Right, contextually from the Latin can be translatably speaking of spirit. Just to note that there. Right? Or the divine, the Ivine, Ha'el, Ha'el, the Almighty, the power, Ha'elohim, Ha'elohim. Now also we have Moshiach or Christ spirit, right? Which is the Ruach Kadosh. Kadosh, right? The Holy Spirit, He. Now after the colon, you see this colon here? I like to show this in some of the videos because I see a lot of ones are using the strong just to help ones to the ones on how to how to how to read the definitions. Now notice right here you have the colon. Notice you have the colon and the hyphen. Everything after the colon and the hyphen in most of the strong's um, concordance definitions is usually the words used in different areas of the Bible, the KJV especially. So that means that this word here, pneuma, right, in the Greek, right, which corresponds, the, the Koine Greek, which corresponds to the Hebrew ruach, in some places in the Bible is translated as ghost. In some places in the Bible is translated as life. In some places in the Bible as spirit or spiritual or spiritually. In some places in the Bible is translated as mind. You get that right there? You see that? mind this is what we said from the very beginning when we showed that first slide we had mind body and soul right well that's a little better than just saying body and soul you know how a lot of them say body and soul it's about body and soul notice they put the body the flesh the carnal before the inner nature the psyche the soul right but here 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 this is a basic right kind of a basic overview right when we're speaking about spirituality Right, the first thing we have to define, right, is spirit. Right, so we're gonna kind of let off on this one right here, 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 a little past. Like, this has been about 90 minutes, y'all. You know, thought we can just do it briefly, but we don't want to do it cheaply. You know, I know it might be long for some ones and ones, and maybe we go over a principle or a point right here, 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 but. You know, so be it. You know, you can check this out or watch, you know, once can check out cartoons or something like that. You know what I mean? There's other things out there, you know, and if one have to take this piecemeal, we really hope and pray that ones are able to get this for themselves because as we got this for ourselves too, we saw how so much of, you know, the principles, right, and the precepts, right, you know, spiritually, even metaphysically, really apply, you know, apply, like they say, to the real world. I, you know, not this fantasy thing, but we do understand why some people have gotten turned off, you know, with, you know, so-called Christianity or Bible, because uh, ones and ones uh, that were responsible, as, as Christ even says in the, in the Bible, Jesus says in the Bible, he said, many shall come in my name, they come in Jesus' name and say they are Christ, they, 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 they're Christians, right, and shall deceive many. And sadly, that is the case. Right, not among all, not all, not all, not all, but the great majority, right, of counterfeit Christianity, especially what we, you know, have come down to us, you know, devolved to us over these 400 plus years, right? We're not projecting this on those from, you know, maybe millennia or whatever before they had their struggles, but many of them 
actually understood some of these basics much, much better. You know, much, much better. Where a lot of this was lost was like in Catholicism. Because during Catholicism and after the whitewash, they took away the humanity of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know, his blackness. They took away the humanity of Jesus Christ, right? And then the next thing they basically did is they took away the word, right? They took away the word. They, people couldn't read the Bible for themselves. So therefore, even the Church of Sardis, represented by Martin Luther and that Reformation, in a sense, in the overall big picture, right, it was a good step, not a perfect step, but a good step forward. As we say that the KJV Bible, like the Church of Sardis, right, it is, it is, it is good. There's some good to it, but it is, it is not perfect. You know, just to be honest, right? So this diagram, if you can find this diagram, I would really, really, you know, advise ones to study it. It has some key verses right here. The We utilize in discipleship as an English starting point of reference, the Schofield Study Bible, the old Schofield Study Bible. So that's what we would highly, highly recommend. Because first of all, we have to recognize, you know, that man is a trinity. Remember that man was made in the image, right? And after the likeness, Right of Elohim, right of the powers of the true good, the true God. Man was made, and male and female. Note that too. Male and female created he them, and this brings forward the threefold nature of man, the threefold nature of Adam, the threefold nature of humanity. So this First Thessalonians five twenty three, in the Schofield Study Bible, the very important note, as well as Hebrews chapter four verse twelve. Right? And so this is like a basic kind of an overview. Right? So at the very outermost of the outer, we have our body. We have our carnal, our flesh. Right? And then we have these, these gates. Right? What are the gates? There's the hearing gate, Shema Yisrael. There's the tasting, the mouth gate, as it says, taste and see that Yahweh is good. There's touch. Right? Touch. Right? Be touched by the feeling of our infirmity, the, the feel gate, right? There is smell, right? That sweet savor. We give Jah, Yahweh, all that smoke. We give Jehovah all that smoke, the sweet savor offering, the Aishan's offering. That's the nose gate. And then there's the sight, the seeing gate. Seen, sight, right? See, right? See. There's that command to see that we also have in the scripture. Right? Not just only with the the, the physical eyes, but also with the eye, you know what I mean? With our, not just with our foolish virgins, our five senses, the natural senses, but with the, the spiritual senses, you know what I mean? To see with our spirit, right? See with our soul, right? Our psycho-spiritual seeing, our psycho-spiritual smelling, psycho-spiritual hearing, psycho-spiritual taste, our psycho-spiritual touch. When I say psycho-spiritual, I'm talking about the soul and the spirit. The soul, she, right? The nefesh in the Hebrew, right? And the suke, the psyche, right? Now, in, among the secular Greeks, they say that the soul, they say there is no soul. They basically translate the word psyche as mind. But in the Hebrew, Right? Or in the New Testament, the word psyche is governed by the Hebrew nefesh. That's what we went to. We're going to go to the nefesh. Right now, we're focusing on the, the ruach, right? the ruach, the spirit. Right? So just take a look at this. We'd like to just focus a study on this right here, but giving this and this vlog here as a point of reference. Now, we have a couple of exhibits, but like to scroll forward. Right, like to scroll forward a little bit right here, here, here. Right, the three parts of man, right, the spirit, soul, and body. We have the Ruach HaKadosh. HaKadosh. Some say HaKodesh. We say HaKadosh because the angels, Seraphim, they say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh is Ha'ab. Kadosh is Ha'ben. Kadosh is HaRuach. In other words, holy is the Ab, the Father, holy is the Son, holy is the Holy Spirit, right? He who be, who he be, the one, Shema'ah Yisrael, 
Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echad. But here, this kind of lays it out right here. I think it's from Hebrew for Christians right here. Kind of lays out, right, the interface, right, the interface. And this requires a study, right? But we just share this right here as a kind of an overview, right? And notice that the rebirth, right, what's rebirthed right here is the spirit. That's what we began off speaking about. Well, what is spirituality? See, because when one's getting that false spirituality, right, then there's a psychic, a psychical conflict, right? One's will psych themselves out. You know what I mean? With counterfeit spirituality or not having any definition of spirituality. Now, it's the ruach, the word ruach, the spirit that received Kabbalah. Kabbalah or Kabbalah receives, right? That receives, right? How do our spirit receive? Through da'at, through knowledge, through scientia, the science, which is the divine knowledge through teaching, right? The Torah, direction, instruction, through revelation, right? As we get the knowledge, we know, okay, what is the spirit? What is the soul? We can discern the spirit and things the spirit from the soul. Just as you can, should be able to distinguish your breath from your flesh. You know, you should you know the difference between your breathing and your, you know, and your flesh, right? But then you also see how your breathing, and your flesh, your carnal, how they interact, and how which one is most important. It's the breath. It's the ruach that's most important, right? It's the spirit, right? And the way we access our spirit is via the breath and breathing. This is a good. I'd like to lay out here. We can use this as a kind of as a point of reference a nefesh right is often said right to be the lower or the animalistic part of the soul in other words what we share in common right with the other chayim the other living creatures the so-called animals is this psychical aspect known as the nefesh right but now the neshama that we have in the beginning that Yahweh he elohim he breathed into man, right? Emphasize, oh, like he emphasized, you remember where Yeshua, he breathed, how he breathed on the Talmudim, the disciples, and said, Receive ye the Ruach Kadosh. Isn't that interesting? Breathing. And see, I don't see any breathing techniques, anything talking about breathing. I don't hear the pastors, the preachers, and the churches. None of that is, is even spoken on. Right now, if you get really upset and angry, they might tell you, calm down, take a deep breath. That's the only time they're going to say anything. They're not going to teach you the connection of taking a deep breath with true spirituality. But now we have the neshama, right? The neshama, the breath. This is the godly or the jah-like, right? The yah-like part, right? Of the nefesh, of the soul, right? Developed via action and practice. See, I want you to take note of that. How do we develop, right, the neshama, right, the neshama, right? Now, see, the neshama is a very, very important, um, is a very, very important aspect of um, spirituality teaching according to the true science of the Hebrew Bible, right? So we call all this is science because science is knowledge, right? Now, as we apply the science, right, you know, like it says, proof, it says test all things, right? Doesn't it say that in the word? Test all things, right? Try all things, right? Test all things, right? Hold fast to that which is true, right? In other words, so scientifically, we investigate, we search out these matters. Just as one doing science, well, I heard it said this and that. So they say the neshama is the breath and he breathed into man, right? You know, the breath of life and he became a living soul. So what we're doing right here is, first of all, understanding what it is, what the Bible is saying. And then seeing how this makes sense, how this works in reality. So a little bit more, when we pick up, we'll get more into, I will say, hopefully the epicenter. Also, another manifestation that man is a trinity is the trifold brain. Um, Sleeker, that this one is not that clear, it's a little blurry right here. But we have the threefold brain, the trifold brain. We have the reptilian cortex, the serpent. Uh-oh. The serpent in the beginning. Ah, the serpent in the garden or the serpent in your mind. <laughs> but we have the reptilian cortex. Then the next level, the mammalian brain, right? That kind of, we could say, link us also with the animals on the 
we're looking at the brain on the physical aspect. We have the emotional brain called the limbic. But then, right, the third, the trinity, we can say, right, the thinking brain. And this is the neocortex. Now notice, neo means new, the new cortex, right, the new cortex. So we can also look at the Hebrew trinity, right, Hashilush HaKadosh, and the teaching from the Torah, the scripture, also in the Brit Chadasha, right, and the teaching of Robeno Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, go in grace in that knowledge, the Da'at, the science, what's the science of Robeno Yeshua, of I and I Rabbi, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of the Messiah. So here, 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 another link as well. Some more links, so some interesting, some very interesting, and just heal up to all the ones and ones doing some of these slides and everything. Because we tend to go and look and seek to find, you know, like what is most, you know, appropriate to bring forth the point. And just like to say thank you very, very much, you know, and may job bless the eye, you know, bless you all, keep you all, cause face it, grace to shine on you and give you Yeshua Shalom. You know, just to be thankful for it because as we searched out, we found some very good ones that from our own research, knowing the knowledge, you know, the, the, the word work, you know, the reading and the meditation work, these word picks help to describe it. So here's the Neshama, to breathe, and the Hawa or the Hava, right? In the sense of existence, intensive, the blast, the inspiration, a murmuring sound, you know, like one's in meditation, or even certain sound you say like, Yeshua, Shalom, the Om, you know what I mean? Those, there's certain sounds, and ones and ones should know that, you know, these sounds, healing sounds, but we also find it, without having to go so much out of our way or Jaway, we find it even in Ha Torah, even in the Hebrew, even in the scripture, in the Psalms, bringing that forward if Jah pleases. A musical notation, whether in pleasure or anger, musing, meditation, muttering, in sighing, in thought. You ever been to meditation and you're like by yourself somewhere, you're like, oh man, mmm, yeah, oh man. You know, that's also part of the Medi right there, in the spirit, in the soul, you know what I mean? as a thunder, sound, tail, or roar, right? So some of this right here, and we say some of this a little more detailed, right? And like to um, just kind of touch on this right here, like to show some here that says Ruach, right? Ruach Yahuwah, right? The spirit of Jehovah right there. Here we have Ruach, right? The top is the Hebrew and the Numa. Right, that's the coin of Greek word, pneuma. It's like the word pneumonia, kind of interesting there. Pneuma, my right? pneumonia. And think about it, breathing, breath, and also the lungs. When ones have pneumonia, it's like water on the lungs. Eh? The lungs. This brother here, I don't know his work, but just heal him up too right here. We saw the cover right there. And you know, we said, yeah, this is a real Israelite. <laughs> right? So, okay, the breakdown of the build. Right on the Hashem, on the name Yahweh, hey, right here. Here we have Yah, Yahweh, Yah, Yehovah, right here, or Jah, Jehovah, right there. Now, Nafshi, Nafshi is to say my soul, my psyche, my affections, my emotion, my act of will, my sense of, my sense of self. You know, that's what that brings out there, that aspect of our being, right? Nefesh. Lachayim to life, to lives. Chayim, life, lives. He, remember the the soul is she. The Holy Spirit is he. My Torah is the teaching, the direction, instruction is the Torah. My the Chodesh, well that's the month right there. Elohim is the powers. My in the sense of Elohim, right as a title applied to Yahweh, to Jehovah. To Yod He Wa He, to He Who Be Who Ye Be, it is He the powers. It's a singularity, always and mostly always reflected, right in the Hebrew, right. We have Chokma or Chakma, Chokma, right, which is wisdom, right. She, this is she who was there in the beginning. For more, read Proverbs chapter eight, 
start from verse 21 to the end. You'll see her testify right there, there, there. Right, Kawa, Kava, right, 72 names. Okay, Nefesh. Okay, let's just get to, this is what we sought to bring out. We talked about it briefly, even before. Now, I haven't, I haven't checked out, okay, William Walker Atkinson, really? He was Yoga Rama Sharaka, but it's a good work. Broke down some basics. It's an old work, right? But some of the oldies, the oldies are goodies. And one reason why we, as a Torah observant Yehudi, right, and seeking to be a Torah observant Rastafari Yehudi, right, one reason why we, um, you know, favor this is because there's no Godiology. There's no, like, theology. It's not saying that, well, like, oh, you got to worship, um, 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 you know Shiva or or Brahma because we already got Abrahama <laughs> you know but there's no there's no Godiology it's speaking about especially in these two books well I have one book to share with you right here I gotta actually when we get into that the water cure I might have no I don't think I went to the water cure there's the water cure practical water cure because these are two themes that are very important if you really can clear through all the counter, counterfeit Christian clut, clutter, if you can clear through all that, you'll recognize that breath and breathing, life and spirit, right, and water are a special themes from the Brit Hayashana, from what's called the Old Testament, to the Brit Hadasha, right? But here we're speaking on the science of breath, right? This is a, a document. Right, that we would highly recommend for ones to get a, 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 a knowledge of it. It's very important because when it says Yeshua breathed on them, remember it says that Yeshua said to us, Rabbeinu said that um, what he does, we will do and even greater. You see what I'm saying? So even we talk about laying on of hands and healing, this potential it exists in the human being. There's no spookism, no, no like so-called witchcraft or no... You see, whitewashed Christian will tell you that because it's among other melanated peoples that we find the relics, you know, of this ancient knowledge that was known. We are 100%, you know, I'll say confident and sure from our study that the science of breath points to the same essential principles that was known to the Hebrews, right, in the oldest of Old Testament times, right, as well as to those in the New Testament times as well. And when you study this and begin to understand the connection, but it all begins with breath, right? I mean, even when we talk about water, which is one of the next subject matters we would like to touch on, even when we talk about water, even in talking about water, water is a half spiritual element. Did you know that? Water is a half spiritual element. What do we mean by that? Well, water, how do they define it scientifically? H2O. There you go. You see the half? Right? H2O. I mean, what is O? O, right? Is oxygen, right? So two parts were hydrogen, one part oxygen. We thought some of this was interesting right here. And we're not promoting Hinduism, right? You know, not for I and I, but, you know, we're looking at the science of health and looking at where, as His Majesty says, the mystics, right? Mystical, you know, we're looking at the mystics, right? Because it's not possible for one to truly be fully, right, into, how can we say, the spirituality of the Hebrews, right? You know, much less the spirituality of Rabbeinu Yeshua HaMoshia without a knowledge of these basic things, right? control or manage we refer to the word manage you can manage your breath when you can manage your breath we say they say right when you can control your breath you can control your life well we say to you when you can manage your breath you can manage remember he says let's create man right you can manage your life but the principle remains true the regular practice of control or manage breathing will increase oxygen, remember H2O, right? So that's where we start with breathing, spirituality. Increase oxygen to your lungs. Help the lymph system get rid of waste. Improve digestion. 
decrease stress, balance your emotions, and increase overall energy. And, and one thing I like about the, the breathing um, exercises, it points to just the essence of the breath and breathing techniques, right? And the connection with the body, with the, the soul, you know what I mean? With the, the life. It doesn't go into, like some people may want to promote different type of, um, what do you call it? Um, well, asanas, asanas, is it asanas? I was say katas, but that's karate, right? Katas, no. Asanas, like different postures and poses. Um, this is not what we are promoting right here, right? We're not saying that, we're saying that one should be cautious. One thing we like about the teachings, these teachings here, right? Like in, in the breathing exercise, Hindu yogi breathing exercise. They do not promote or encourage, right? any godiology is just speaking about health and harmony and ancient science right that many who are into the hebrew bible scriptures or into christ and christianity have lost sight of right to their detriment right um did you know for example now notice right here two aspects inspiration exhalation all right here we go right here now some of the basic postures and poses you know these are very ancient but have been um you could say refined in certain eastern i would say eastern religions but certain certain eastern um 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 some eastern eastern systems we could call them eastern spiritualities but where they promote uh other gods so to speak well, as a Hebrew, we know right, that we're to have none of the Elohim Acherim, right, before Yahweh Eloheinu, right? So basically you can kick buckets on that, you know what I mean? Kick rocks, you can kick the rock on that. But this is one thing we like about and love about the teachings, right, is that they help to tie in, right, to what we have in the Hebrew scriptures and even in the New Covenant, the working principles that it becomes clearer and clearer was known to them then right but has been lost to many of us who may be into some of the so-called abrahamic what is what's called the abrahamic traditions right deep breathing is one of the body's strongest self-healing tools deep breathing most of our problems in the western gentile world is shallow breathing you know what I mean? And even not to go into the COVID-19 thing or whatever else like that, but that seems to have something to do with like, you know, um, like some people seem to be affected in certain breathing aspects. But I'm not going into that, but going into the healing. Deep breathing is one of the body's strongest self-healing tools. Why? It lowers blood pressure. Now, all this is scientifically, medically verified. And you don't even have to verify it there. Listen, you got high blood pressure, right? Some of us know we, we have as black man, right? As an Israelite, a Judahite, a so-called Negro, you know? And they say, we black men, we got high blood pressure. And so this is for my brothers, the Chabarim as well, as well as my sisters, because sisters are also, you know, catching these things too, right? Seeing they said, well, let us make man in our end of the likeness and male and female. So if we mind, we won't be the first, but our sisters, mothers, daughters, wives, you know, are also getting the same blood pressure, you know, right? So deep breathing lowers the blood pressure. And we've actually have done this. Sometimes we've taken our blood pressure, you know, I have a little blood pressure kit, you know, earthly has high blood pressure. So we monitor that, monitor that. And years ago, we also had a situation with that you know occasionally we have to regulate ourselves but as we keep track of spirituality and do this more regularly see that's what it's all about practice remember we're talking in the shama that practice being activated through practice right it lowers blood pressure reduces heart rate decreases stress boom stress hormones exercises the lungs exercising our lungs that's the mind used to say your lung half a strong to, to bun sense of mania. We never really used to say smoke. The, the ancient Rastaman, you know, used to say to Ayana, Ayana, smoke, we are bun, 
right? We burn the aishins, right? But also just to clean the lungs, right? There are lung cleaning exercises which are very vital and vital, right? Increases physical and mental energy. But here's the key. It improves immunity. Mm -hmm. Now, not to get deeper here, but we'll show Ja Woolen the link between immunity and salvation. It's interesting. Immunity and salvation. I'll leave this on for a moment so if ones and ones want to like uh, pause it, not really to read over it, but you know, it's just giving like in a diagram, you know, and give thanks to summitstrength.au right au as well. AU. Mm. AU is the 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 periodic table um code for gold and also African Union. I don't know, I'm just saying, right? But you say it relieves tension in neck and shoulders, contributes to good posture, proper breathing. Right? So here we're maintaining, this is how we maintain the temple. Isn't it interesting that it says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple? Right? Of Elohim. If his spirit, right? If his what? His breath. Right? Three exercises to expand the lungs in 360 degrees. Right? So there's some useful information. Breath of fire to elevate your mind. There's some useful information. We get into a little more details of it, brothers and sisters. Okay, I think uh, yeah, we're gonna break down, get into some like spookism, right? Like break down the spookism, right? The etymology of spirit, right? And yeah, some related works. Now this is this is expanding it. We're looking at the time, and this is one of the yeah. We already hit the two hour, mm -hmm, the two hour mark right here, brothers and sisters. So this is basically once again to speak about spirituality. A lot of folks are talking about spirituality. Right? You know, what's spiritual and spirituality? Right? We didn't even deal with the alcohol spirits. <laughs> you know, because those are spirits too, as well. Alcohol, right? You know, are spirits too. So, spirituality. Spirituality begins, right, with the breath. Mm -hmm. Spirituality, true spirituality begins with the breath, right? The breath of life. And learning to manage it, right? Learning to recognize it, right? And how it links with our psyche, right? You know, with our soul, right? With our spirit, how it's good for and healthy to the body. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Like, share, you know, subscribe right here, here, here. Also check out I and I podcast. We've been sharing some of the streams up here as well. Um, check us out at lojs.org. Any contact ones and ones might seek to contact a link. If ones go to lojs.org, you know that's usually a direct way. You know, so if ones and ones are hitting us up, um, sometimes you know um, the harvest is ready. But the laborers and co-laborers are few. I give thanks for those co-laboring Habarim with I and I, you know, on the air, in the iris, far and near. However, um, if ones and ones seek a, to get a message or whatnot across, you know, lojs.org, you know, is the probably best place, you know, because we have a few ones and ones that regularly check that on I and I behalf so we can, you know, focus on this aspect you know, of the work and the ministry. So anyway, once again, Shalom Chabarim. Shalom. Yeshua Shalom.